What is up, y'all? It's your girl, brand new, and honey, I am back in the building. Listen, listen, this time, honey, I am back with a recap of Love and Marriage Huntsville. This is, is it season eight? I forgot what season we own, child. I will have the episode number in the description, honey. Let's get off into it. Listen, okay? We got Moses and we got Destiny. And Destiny still did not learn from her situation with the barbecue that these ninjas don't care about you like that, gal. They don't care. She get to tell him, but you, you, uh, named your business after my baby girl. He could just like the name. Okay. He does not have any emotional ties to you. They have them when they st- when they stick and they think thing up in you, but as soon as they find a new hole and a new owner <laughs> of that hole, <laughs> they are done, girl. Okay, didn't La Barbecue make a big deal of you taking his last name? He just wanted you to, you know, take his whole last name. He didn't want to, you know, he didn't want you to keep yours, but he divorced you, honey, after three long weeks. After three weeks, honey, after you'd have had that that baby. Uh-huh. So, girl, these men, they don't, you know, they don't feel sentimental uh, to you. Moses was trained. I could tell you guys right now, I don't care what anybody says. He was trained by Sonny. Okay. He was trained by Sonny. To say certain stuff, like even in his interviews, to keep calling her the wife and Destiny's the side chick. And some of you all were saying, yeah, but you know, women need to learn a man will sleep with you, but he'll wife somebody else. And see, all of that can be true. But what you have to understand with men is men are all about patterns of behavior. So Sonny is being love bombed right now. Sunny is the flavor of the week. Okay. She is, you know, the choice right now. Yes, she has the title, but she does not have any time. Um, you know, she does not have any time that she could account for like she has not been with Moses for that long. Everybody, if you talk to anybody in the world, men, women, dogs, cats, they will tell you their mate, their spouse was the greatest thing since sliced bread in the beginning. Everybody is nice, right? In the beginning, everybody is loyal to you. They, they all goo goo gaga over you, but just give it some time. Um, and that's what Sonny has not did. She has exaggerated her level of importance based off of, yeah, but I'm a wife and he married me under six months. And that has more to do with you. Okay. That has more to do with you than it, than it does him. Okay, especially with his history, he has a history of cheating and you're sitting up here laughing at destiny. Oh, she was a side chick. But what does that say about his character and sunny girl, boo boo, oatmeal pie face? You not, you not cute like that. So he go get used to you. Just watch. (laughs) He go get used to you and there will be another one and another one. I can see it. So to me, Sonny is putting 20 on 10. Like if this is your man, y'all in love, just be quiet about it. Don't do all the bragging and bashing. Some of y'all are saying, well, Destiny, you know, she putting him out on blast. Destiny kind of has that right because she has the right to be like, well, yeah, because she's right when she says they're coming on the show that I was on. Sonny was a producer. Moses wasn't even showing up to be a part of this. Okay. He didn't want to be on TV, but nigga, what are you doing now? But he's willing to do it for Sonny. And, and some of that may be true. Sonny probably is the better pick than Destiny from a financial status, right? But... 
is she a woman of character? Is she a woman of morals, values, ethics, decorum? Only time will tell. As of right now, she's not that girl. Because whenever, I'm going to tell y'all something. I have seen it with my own eyes. I've seen women brag about they man, they man, they man, they husband, they husband. And he's so great and he chose me. Okay, he chose me. All of those are pick me terms. Okay, and it is a desperation to be validated by a man. That is what that is. So, yeah, shit is good for y'all right now, Sonny, but you ain't spent five years with this man. Y'all don't have five years of friendship. Look at how long he knew Destiny and, and, You know, like I said, to Moses' credit, maybe Destiny didn't give him anything to respect. So, but I see, um, I see this from all sides. I don't see this just, oh, well, they moved on and they're gonna, you know, have this happily ever after. I, for some reason, you guys, I don't see that with Moses and Sonny. It's too much bragging. To me, Sonny is putting too much dip on her chip. Uh, she does not have the experience uh, with him. Look at all the women that was on uh, Housewives bragging about they man. Remember how Monique Samuels used to throw her man all up in them women's face? Now she's divorced. My man, my man, he always behind me at the reunion. Now where are y'all? Okay. And their relationship, their marriage had gotten so bad on Love and Marriage DC. That's why her ass didn't come back for season two. She was embarrassed. Okay, she was embarrassed that the audience saw the cracks in her marriage. And on top of that, she's a dark-sided Libra, honey, that like to lie. Okay, so yeah, some of those women on Potomac, you know, they may have been jealous of her marriage and, you know, all the material things that her husband would buy her and, you know, houses, cars, and and they didn't have that right. Some of that is true, but Monique's identity was that marriage. And now you hear her talking a whole different tune in those interviews about how she had to find herself. She was a people pleaser. She was over there catering to Chris. Okay, having all them babies, she stayed barefoot and pregnant and and anytime, to me, he didn't seem all that supportive of her goals. Remember early on, Monique had told the girls that what, Chris didn't support her birthday, he would start arguments uh, with her. So you got to pay attention to that type of stuff. But a lot of people, they're blinded by the money. They're blinded by somebody's financial status. I always side-eye their marriage. I thought that they had a beautiful family, right? Can't take that away from them. Beautiful children. And Monique's daughter, you guys. Just that little girl is gorgeous. But, you know, you can't take that from them. But still, we saw the cracks, some of us. So it, to me, it's Sonny's like attitude. I think she needs to pull back, tone down. And why you have so much energy, you know, for destiny. Okay. Moses said that destiny wasn't in a financial place. Uh, She wasn't in an emotional place. I believe that. I believe destiny is a person, a woman that is emotionally unavailable. It just, she even admitted to it, you know, with all these long distance relationships. Child, I literally spit my damn drink out when Destiny said Moses was uh, fine and broken. And what do you think you are? You broken too? Okay, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> Child, Moses told her they both had her best interests. I don't think so. I don't know. It, I'm getting business relationship with Sonny and Moses, you know, and like I said, only time will tell, right? But it's just, you know, like the things that they are saying, I just feel like it's too much. You know, you could talk your shit after five years, I feel, but y'all don't even have five minutes in the game. Okay. Okay. And ladies, I'm here to tell you when a man trashes his ex in a certain type of way, you know, it just says a lot about him. Okay. It it says a lot about him. And 
your turn is next because he's going to feel that way about you one day. He's going to say all this bad stuff about you because you got to look at that. What were you over there with Destiny doing? You thought it was good enough at one point. Okay. But yeah, I do agree with him. Destiny has way too much going on, constantly getting arrested uh, in and out of the courts with the barbecue. We still don't know fully what that is about. Um, I don't know. It, it, like one of you said, you know, she's very ambiguous about certain things. She is. She doesn't like fully tell us, you know, what's going on. You know what I noticed? He hurried up and got his ass away from that table when she said, you wanted to be my girlfriend. I paid attention to that. Did y'all notice that? It's like it hit a nerve and he couldn't take it. Okay. And Destiny, honey, was looking good. You got to give it to her. I wonder who paid because <laughs> Moses kept telling her, yeah, I had to do all the paying. And I wonder what Destiny did for him. Did she ever like, you know, contribute to the relationship or did he feel like pressure to pay for everything? Like, I really want to know the dynamics, right? Because if you are dealing with somebody and you got to always pay and it's always you, you know, that's paying for their flight and you know what I'm saying? But then, like she said, you know, I have to work. You're not paying all my bills. So, fellas, if you're not paying all of this woman's bills, you can't request for her to be around all the time. You can't request that and you're not making sure you know, that her bills and stuff is, is taken care of. So, yeah, I feel like both of these two people were using each other for sex. That's what I do. And booty calls, and, you know, that can last if it's some good sex, honey. Okay, the people go show up for it. Okay, there is attraction between Moses and Destiny. And, I don't know. I think that um, you're going to always be able to attract, you know, a man, you know, with your looks, but it, it's not going to be enough. Right. So maybe, you know, he didn't feel like she had her shit together. So, you know, some of that is in there. I can see it, you know. So, yeah, but I don't think neither one of them are being honest about what really, you know, what they were doing in this relationship and were you married? You were married and dealing with this woman. And, and this is how I noticed Sonny is messed up because she thinks that by calling Destiny a side chick, that makes Destiny look bad. No girl, your man looks bad. Your man looks bad. Um, because it says that he's been married and, he may cheat. This is a, that cheating shit, that is a pattern of behavior. Doing real slick and sly stuff on the low, that is a pattern of behavior. Okay, and it's not going to go away just because you look good on paper. You know, it's up to that man to, you know, change his ways. Okay, so... You know, they say, honey, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. But, you know, we have to wait for this situation, you guys, to play out. But I just see a lot of patterns of behavior that I can't ignore. Okay? Because I done been around women like Sonny. My husband, he just would never do that to me. Shit. You say that today. You stick around for longer than five minutes. You will see what they do. Okay, and that man will smash Destiny. He still will screw screw her. Okay, that's another thing some of you all, y'all don't think about. Some of these men, they will talk that shit. Okay, but he'll call Destiny later when your ass ain't looking. And I was looking at uh, Sonny's uh, head. It just looked like a damn flat screen. Her forehead is shaped like a damn flat screen TV. And you saw all the insecurities, honey, coming up out of her. How is she dressed? And that's how I know she's insecure and got low self-esteem because I had some lady in my past 
that kept trying to keep up with me. What was Brandy wearing? Uh, don't matter, bitch. I could come naked out and I'ma look better than you. Boo boo, oatmeal pie face. Okay, if you don't get your ass on, you can never compete with the queen. Okay, you a peasant. <laughs> But yeah, you you know, you saw Sonny's insecurities pouring out, you know, when she was talking like that. And did you notice he didn't even have on his ring? And see, that's another red flag because that was your time, Moses, to be like, I was married now. I was married. And then what did um Sonny say? Oh, I'm going to have my ring all up in her face. See, it's your attitude, your behavior. Why do you need to go so hard to prove something? You guys are married. You know, you go on about your business. But the fact that you got to throw it all up in Destiny's face, it it says insecurity. It says I'm trying to compete where I don't compare. You don't look as good as Destiny. Now, you may be more paid. Okay, I can't take that from you. Because some of the men out here, honey, they... You know, you know, they want to be with a woman that's paid. Okay. But in some men though, Moses is a pretty boy. And to me, Moses and you are giving, I'm the prize in the relationship, in the marriage. Moses feels like he is a prize in the marriage. He the pretty one. When he was with Destiny, he didn't, he kind of felt like they were on equal playing fields, probably in the looks department. Like, okay, she matched me. Okay. Now, did you notice in that interview, he mentioned that Destiny doesn't match his fly as far as business and money, but Sonny don't match your fly as far as, you know, the looks and the feeling confident, because I'm here to tell you guys, when you're confident, you don't say and do the stuff that Sonny is doing. I was sitting up there looking at her like, girl, stop it. Okay, stop. So we see Latifa and Trisha, they are at the gym. Trisha is going to be Latifah's trainer. Tisha didn't thicken right on up, huh? She used to be small. When this show first started, I was looking at old picture. That damn uh, Tisha is thicker than a snicker. But they get to talking about how Trisha and um, Stormy is really close and, you know, Tisha has had, you know, issues with Stormy, but she's willing to give Trisha a chance. Trisha is willing to give her a chance. Child, that damn Tisha was running out of breath, sweating and, and, <laughs> and carrying on, honey. When Trisha had her lifting them weights, honey. Okay, Tisha, girls. <laughs> Tisha went after eat. Okay, she went out to eat after that. Okay, she she could uh, keep up with old Trisha, honey. So we find out Trisha is still married. Girl, get away from that man. Okay, her and her husband they a bit weird. He was still living with his ex. All of that is a hell no. I don't want my man living with his baby mama. Mm mm living with his ex-girlfriend, ex-wife. No, I guess the husband don't want the divorce. He's not willing to sign off. Sound like he's very controlling and like abusive and girl, you got to stay on his ass and get that divorce. Child, why did Tisha, she got the bringing up destiny to Trisha and you know how they've been working out together and all i could think about is did destiny pay this lady <laughs> okay are you going to be getting your money from latifa <laughs> cuz she don't like to pay either okay trisha also mentions that she's kind of kin honey to miss nail you know she's from the younger generation but you know she don't really keep up with miss nail and her family but I was like, oh, okay. I just want to know what's up with her and Martell Hook-Headed Holt. Did they do a little something? 
Okay. But Trisha tells Tisha she really likes her and, you know, she looks forward to getting to know her and, you know, Tisha likes her too. So they hug it out. So next, honey, we got our girl, Miss Melody Cherie. Absolutely. She's having a pajama jam with her girlfriends. Having been married for so many years and now divorced, most of your friends end up being married friends. I got some PJs for y'all too. Absolutely. Yes, Shanita girl, we know you loaded right there in the back, girl. Tonight, I have planned a sleepover with my girls so that we can relax. As a newly single woman, it's important for me to spend time with my girls so we can kick back and relax. Ma, did you want to come to the uh, sleepover? I don't do the ghetto. I'm going to sit this one out, Melody. I don't. I just can't do the ghetto. <laughs> So y'all know that I'm all about self-care, self-love, and and pampering. Absolutely. I just want to pamper you all because you all have been so amazing. Child, I'm so happy to see Melody with her real friends. Finally, honey. What y'all have in them uh, pink glasses, honey? I want me some pink panties. My mother used to make pink panties. What is pink panties? It is pink lemonade, frozen pink lemonade, whip topping, gin. Because the gin will make you sin, honey. How you doing? I think that's pretty much, you know, it looked like they may have had a little something of a pink panty going on, honey. I'm going to need me some pink panties soon, honey. So they end up toasting to real friendship. I really like the Shanita lady. I felt like, um... She seemed to be like very in tune with Melody and, you know, what she's going on in her, what she got going on in her life and all the hell she done been through with Martell, hook headed Chucky Holt. Okay. I love the wet hair that Mel had in her confessional, that wet blonde hair, the purple dress, just beautiful. So, child, they get to talking about how Shanita um, has tried to hook Melody up with a, with a man that don't have a side tooth. Uh, Shanita, girl, the man need all his teethuses, okay? What's, what's up with that? <laughs> they get to talking about how Melody need to get a man that's in Africa. Melody is doing a lot of uh, charity work. Shanita brings up um, a question to Melody. Do you feel that other people contribute to you not being able to heal? Uh, of course, uh, Mark Tail, Hook Headed Holt. Um, you know, like I said, all the hell he didn't put her through hell during the marriage was enough. Now you got to go through a divorce with this brother Tucker and now you got to co-parent with him and you actually have judges that want to sit up and play in your face and act like this man is normal. Like that kills me with, with some people, you know, they'd be trying to act like certain people are normal people. You could just work stuff out with. No, a lot of people have demonic spirits. Okay, they're narcissistic. They are agents of chaos and you cannot work with them or reason with them. Melody gets to telling the ladies about how after her and Martell was divorced, he had popped up on one of her dates and recorded it and threw it all up in her face. And it's ridiculous. You know, like how can you fully like move on and you always dealing, you know, with this drama with your ex? Melody admits that she's uh, really not ready to date right now. Then one of her girlfriends teases her about, you know, you really want somebody that's upbeat like you, gal. I like what Shanita said to Melody as far as Martell, uh, because Melody feels like a part of her, you know, isn't ready 
to fully date because she doesn't know how Martell is going to respond to it. And Shanita says, stop walking right back into the hurt. Um, you got to live your best life. You got to do you. Yeah, you, you're going to have to. And I know that it's hard, you know, for Melody. And it's easier said than done, right? Because she didn't been through a lot with him. But yeah, I really want her to, you know, put herself first hopefully they can get his ass off this show i think it'll be easier for her to do her job once you know um certain ties are cut you know with him you know because it's it's team too much he on the show you got a co-parent with him he knows he is hell you know that's a true narcissist even after your breakup you're stalked you are gossiped about they do a whole smear campaign trying to you know tell everybody about you, uh, change people's minds and opinions about you just because you left them because of how badly they were treating you. Like, make it make sense. Shanita feels like people need to pick a side when it comes to Martell and Melody. Um, you know, they should see who the problem is by now but you could just tell with some of their responses uh Kimmy Latifa like they want to believe that male is just like this man and you know she be getting on social media too you even had Latifa when male came out with telltale signs she said that male was male bashing and you know she was just saying all this stuff about Martell as if it came from where it came from Martell's behavior she didn't make those lyrics up it wasn't a fiction song it was true shit okay so yeah and Marceau and Maurice they don't give a damn about what Martell do they didn't even give a damn when he was cheating on his wife the one sat up there and told everybody I think I could be more effective if I stay around him and a side chick and do what like child Mm -mm -mm. so stormy and trisha i found uh their scene to be a bit boring she got martell coming in it just looked like forced i don't know stormy you see how martell has been acting on this show and and you see all the hell he didn't put melody through and so why do we reward people with bad behavior like why he would not be invited to any event that I was giving at all. Um, you know, when he came in, he acted as if he didn't even know Trisha and she had said she had just seen the fool at Target. Okay. So he's so fake. He got all these damn personas. He's always wearing a fake mask, right? because he is ashamed well he ain't ashamed because he keep doing the same shit over and over again you know he should be ashamed of his bad behavior but he's not he likes this dynamic with his brother that his brother is the bad one and the one that's always in prison there are men uh you guys that are on the first floor um they love having friends that are in prison incarcerated away from their families that way they can look like the good guy and the more accomplished guy because they are out of jail but shit your ass hook headed you said it right you was almost in there with him and they should have kept you okay but yeah this whole scene it was weird it was awkward stormy and trisha together it's boring does trisha have a mother okay or somebody to help her um because girl homegirl is giving witness protection program okay she look worried she looks scared she on the run she's still married the ex is crazy is he gonna come on here and act a fool i don't know so stormy is gonna be having this event for her new product line and you know she want trisha in the thong she want mark tail in his boxers he talking about his body isn't bodying i'm like yes yeah, need to be in therapy see he doesn't need to be glorified anymore for how he looks that's his problem did y'all see him he was like a damn dog <laughs> Oh, you want me to show my body? <laughs> That's all I know how to do. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to get back in that gym. Storm about to have its function and all these people going to be looking at me and I just got to look good. And How about you be a good person? How about that? How about we have a workshop on treating your ex-wife and children with respect? How about y'all do more shiggity like that? But he does like Stormy, you could have hired anybody. You don't need to incorporate him because he's on the cast. He need to be on the bench. And I'm pretty sure once y'all stop filming with this fool, he will get a hint like, oh, I need to act, you know, a little bit better. I don't think it'll fully help, but shit, something. I'm serious. They keep rewarding his bad behavior. He don't need to be at no damn function. And Trisha looking at Stormy all crazy. And then Stormy says out her mouth, yeah, how about you train Martell? And she like, well, I don't normally train guys, but I guess I'll, I'll do it for you. And I was like, why are you forcing something? What is going on? Stormy noticed there was some type of energy with them. Do you know each other? Do you not know each other? She never said she didn't know him him i think she's more familiar with the brother but she knows you know who he is right so yeah just i wonder did they do a little something or what what was that little part where trisha was talking to herself and uh stormy was walking martell to the door and she's still sitting up there you know like she in the witness protection program just oh child you need therapy okay you need jesus on the main line gal so we see uh sonny and moses i kind of already talked about them but sonny's insecurities were just out there did destiny have on heels um, he said when most nigga niggas say, yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. Shit, them titties was up out of they seatbelt. You was looking, nigga, okay? Sonny just looked very insecure, and girl, you need some bangs, okay? You need some bangs on that forehead, because that forehead is out before the sun. I mean, I'm just saying, listen, listen. So, yeah, was she looking cute? Destiny always looked cute okay destiny always look good so this right here all of this is a red flag all of us that's really paying attention we can see that the red flags are red flagging because you still worried about destiny okay and that their boy will still hit it yes he will he will do the one and the two with her Okay, he don't care if she don't pay her bills on time. They ain't got nothing to do with him getting some of that kitty cat. But yeah, Sonny was definitely worried. Now, if you is on your eyes, Mary, and I'm the one with the ring, if you was really like in your genesse quoi, if you was really feeling yourself, gal, you wouldn't be worried about destiny. But you worry. You and your forehead. Y'all was worried, girl. He your man now, girl. Moses tells her things got a little heated and then, you know, he got to saying, well, I don't believe in arguing with a woman. And, um, she got to saying, well, that's my place. And I'm here. See all of that red flag. That's girl. Don't act like that. If the man ladies, let me get y'all a little hint. If a man is with you, right. And you want to convince the world and yourself that he is your man. Don't be so insecure, worried about some other woman, unless he gives you reason, right? That's fine. But you didn't talk to all this shit, most shit in a little bit about how you the better choice and he made you a wife and she was just a side chick. See, you didn't said all of that. Now you worried about what she's wearing and you know, all of that. So, because you know, she's a knockout. She killing you. She is. And Moses, um, I'm paying attention. He ain't even looking at Sonny. He ain't even, you know, so that's another red flag. No eye contact with your wife, your wife that you let us know you had 52 times, honey, in that interview you did with Dustin. So, yeah, this is somebody that has a wandering eye. Um, if he's cheated in the past, he may cheat 
with you. I mean, I'm just saying that's a lot of what they do. He's a pretty boy. He feels like I can tell the type of relationship they got. He feel like he the prize. A man don't have to be the pretty boy in a marriage or relationship to feel like he the prize. Okay. He don't even have to be pretty. A lot of it will be ego and they will go get a plain Jane like Sonny. <laughs> And, you know, so, yeah, I already, honey, I already see the previews, the coming attractions. I already see it. Sonny got to talking about how she was never Destiny's friend and Destiny blurred the line. Sonny, where you messed up was you spent time with this girl outside of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Because if it was just work, then it would have just been work. But inviting her to surprise birthday parties, and that's kind of personal. Yeah, just sister, invite her. And then y'all did some other stuff off camera that had nothing to do with work. So we're going to get, you know, we're going to get more information on the um, reunion. And then you knew that this situation wasn't right because you had... Uh, originally told Moses, see, you felt the way, right? You originally told Moses that, no, I, I can't date you. This, this could be a setup. And, you know, but like I said, though, you know, she realized that Moses means more to her than destiny ever would mean to her. She probably felt like, Destiny felt like Sonny was her friend, but Sonny did not feel like Destiny was a friend of hers because it wasn't a reciprocal relationship. I told y'all that's where Destiny's issue is because all these people you have been affiliated with feel used. Moses, Sonny, Mel, it was always one-sided. They just giving you money. You just taking it. They feel sorry for you. You played a victim. We're going to find out more. Um, But yeah. What did y'all think about that scene? And like I said, it was a big red flag he didn't have that ring going around destiny because you around here nigga time on you mary and sonny felt the way like dang you didn't have your ring on. uh-uh they ain't wearing that because they don't you know once some of them feel like once they got you you know they got you they ain't gotta you know so that's a red flag within itself so next honey we got trisha and ken ken cooks a romantic dinner i told y'all i love being that could cook and gives her a gift honey a nice little bracelet she said he spends time with the kids taking them to games dances you know even when she's not around that's good that's good but girl you need to get divorced that way you can get up off this witness protection program okay Trisha got to saying she want to watch something that has some killing in it. What the hell? Shit. Girl, I got this what's love got to do with it, okay? <laughs> we could watch that girl. Probably bring back some old memory. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> killing. What's up with her? Unaliving, folks? Listen. So Trisha tells her boyfriend, because she's still married. Okay, that gal is still married, but she tell Ken that she like uh, Tisha and she go keep training her. Trisha says, honey, she go see how it goes with Tisha. Okay, and she go copy off of you and steal ideas and, and do what she do, honey. Trisha tells Ken that Stormy wants her to model for her Galentine's event and Martell was there and he acted as if he didn't know who she was meanwhile they just saw that fool at target and her boyfriend is kind of like why did he act like that so ken got to saying what we all was thinking like damn you know that whole situation with Martell, it make it look like y'all used to date or mess around or something and she agreed ken tells trisha he wants to get married as soon as her paperwork is signed like girl you need to get on that ken tells trisha he's starting to feel as if her or her husband you know they don't want to get up out of their marriage because if he was in a marriage that he didn't want to be in he would hurry up and get a divorce so yeah you gotta look at that 
So Trisha admits that she is, you know, scared to get married again. Girl, the biggest reason why is you still married and you still got that baggage. And I think Trisha needs to go to therapy, get out of that damn gym, you know, get over this past marriage. Um, You need to heal. This man seems like a good man, but hell, he ain't gonna stick around while you still married to this man that ain't no damn good. So anyways, honey, the episode goes off. That's all I got to say, you guys, about all of this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I am your girl, Brand New, and I will check you guys out in the next episode.